Welcome to Chopstick Travel, I'm Luke Martin and today we are in Fez, Morocco. This is the oldest city here in Morocco and in this episode we are going to be exploring its old town or Medina, a UNESCO World Heritage Site of 9,000 twisting and turning alleyways all packed full of traditional Moroccan street food. This episode is partnered with Moroccan Food Tours. They offer food tours and cooking classes all across Morocco in eight different cities. So if you'd like to book a tour or a cooking class, hit the link down in the description box. It's gonna be a really exciting day. We're gonna be eating all kinds of street food, visiting all kinds of sites. This is going to be the complete Fez food and site tour. So make sure to stay tuned to the end because you're not gonna to wanna to miss it. So let's go inside and check it out. We're sitting down for breakfast now. We have quite a few different types of bread actually. So we just watched them making some of these breads up fresh. And this one here is called Begriel. And this is uh, sort of like a crepe. And it's covered with a ton of honey. And you can see it's got this interesting kind of porous texture to it. Back here we've got two more types of bread. This one's an oat uh, bread. This is just uh, bread that was cooked in a pan. This one's like a flat bread all folded up. And then back here we've got a semolina dough bread. And then in the middle, we've got uh, olive oil just to dip the bread in. And of course we also have this uh, coffee, this is Arabic coffee with milk and spices. So I'm guessing lots of cardamom in there. And then sugar on the side. Oh yeah, oh nice. Okay, this one is the one with honey and he completely saturated this thing with honey. I can feel it, it's just kind of soggy. Look at that, wow. Mm. Yeah, it's sort of like a, almost like a sponge cake. That's good. Next I'm gonna try this oat bread. Break a piece off and dip it in the olive oil here. Mm. It's got this rough, grainy texture with all of those oats in there. Good with the olive oil. Mm. I'm gonna try this semolina dough bread next. Again with the olive oil, of course. Oh yeah, let's try. Mm. Simple, but good. It doesn't have as much of a flavor as the oat, but you can taste the olive oil stronger in this one. That olive oil is really, really high quality. How was breakfast? So good. That honey covered crepe was the best. And just washing it down with that Arabic kind of like spicious coffee. Good way to start the day. On Let's to the keep next going. One. So annoying. Luke is so annoying. We are at our next stop and this is the local date dealer. We're right in one of the tiny alleyways and you can see we've got ourselves some dates that have been stuffed with walnuts. So these are the highest quality that he serves and this is common as a gift to uh, the bride and groom at a wedding. So stuffed dates with walnuts. Looks really interesting. Let me try. You, whole thing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Half? Okay, half. Mm. Oh man. That is so fresh. Oh man, that is delicious. I love that. Crunchy nut on the inside, and then really soft, creamy date on the outside. A little bit sweet, and then nutty. That works really, really well. Wow. Mm. Those are delicious. Check this out right here, this is really cool. This is a camel head. So camel meat is quite popular here in Morocco. This guy is selling camel meat. That thing is huge. <laughs> There's gotta be a lot of meat from those. What are you doing? So I've got this uh, big stick here and we are at a stall that is serving bisara, which is like a broad bean soup. And this is used to stir it. Think. He just gave me this and told me to, to start stirring. Oh yeah, look at how thick this is in here. Oh man, it is seriously creamy. It's like a paste almost. It smells really good. It smells kind of like fool. It's very similar to fool. Oh man. <laughs> okay. 
We have our Bissara. This shop is so cool. It's really, really tiny, but very popular with the locals. And you can see it's covered in a huge layer of olive oil, of course. You can see that thick, fava bean or broad bean mash underneath here. And then I've been told that I should add some of this garlic with more olive oil. So I'll, I'll go a little light because I'm not sure how strong this stuff's gonna be. And there's also cumin and uh, chili. I'll add a little bit of both, not too much. There, that should be good. And let me mix this up a little bit. This smells incredible. That cumin smells so good and that garlic too. Mm. Oh man, that is incredible. The garlic, the cumin, the chili, it all works so well together, but my favorite part is definitely the texture. It's somewhere between like a watery soup and a paste. It's a very nice texture. And then with all that olive oil, of course, as well. That is so good. That's perfect for breakfast. Very, very good for breakfast. That chili's not too spicy. It's nice and hearty though. Look at this. Oh man, that's so good. We have barely walked 100 meters and we've already made three stops and uh, they've got all kinds of different things going on. Check out this, chickens, live chickens. So we just made a quick stop at this 15th century Islamic school and the architecture in here is just out of this world gorgeous. Every square inch of this place is detailed with tiles, with uh, woodwork, with stonework, with all kinds of arches. It is just gorgeous in here. Back in the alleyways, it's just so fun to walk around here. Some of the parts of the alleys are covered like this here, and then some are opened. You just feel like, I don't know, like Aladdin, or like, I don't know, some kind of, like I'm in another world almost. We're popping into this shop right here which specializes in honey and olive oil and a couple other products. So I think we're gonna taste some honey. I am just surrounded by these massive tubs of honey and they're different kinds and they come from different flowers that the bees are pollinating. So the first one that we have here is actually thyme. So this is thyme honey and you can see it's almost gone. Here is lavender. So from the lavender flower, it's got a completely different color. Next is fig, so it even has like different textures in here, it's a lot darker. Next is rosemary flower honey, and then finally we have orange flower honey. So all of them look different and they're gonna taste different, so we're gonna sample them now. This is thyme. Thyme. Okay, I have the first kind, this is <laughs> the thyme. It's dripping off, oh man. You? Super good. Mmm, it's fruity. Very sweet, very creamy. Oh yeah. This is lavender. Lavender, okay. Next kind of honey. Mm. Oh yeah. That one's even fruitier. And the consistency isn't as like sticky as the last one. Super, super good. Mm. More? This is a fig. Thank you. Next up is fig, the fig honey. Mm. Oh wow, there's actually some like crystallized bits in there, makes it a little crunchy, but that is ultra sweet. This one is the sweetest one yet. That's my favorite. This is rosemary honey. Mm. Mm. This is my kind of tasting, wow. The diversity in the flavor is crazy. You would think honey just kind of all tastes sweet and the same. It certainly does not. That is completely different than the previous. All right, the last one is orange. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's the lightest one. Kind of, yeah, you can almost taste like the orange, like citrusy almost. Very floral too. We have a very special Moroccan paste that we're about to try with almonds, argan oil, and honey mixed together. And just look at it, it's super thick. I'm gonna give it a try. It almost looks like a peanut butter. Thank you. There we go. Oh wow. Cool. That was like nothing I've ever tasted before. That was incredible. 
Wow, that was quite the experience. I've never tasted such a variety of honey before. It definitely leaves sweetness in your mouth. So, not exactly sure what's next. We're just gonna keep going. This is so much fun. There's so much to see here in the Medina of Fez. It is packed full of stuff. We're just checking out a traditional bakery. They're making all kinds of pastries in this really cool oven. It feels like it's a very, very old shop. So let's try some of these pastries. So Mohammed's gonna explain. We've got a couple of different types of Moroccan pastries here. What do we have? Yeah, those are more cookies than pastries. Cookies, okay, uh, we yeah. can call them cookies. This uh, this first kind is called fakas, and it's with the uh, anise seeds and with sesame seeds and flour and sugar, of course. Okay. Uh, a little bit of almonds. Yeah. Uh, this one is with some uh, cocoa. Okay. Uh, and this one is with chocolate powder and some dates. Uh, okay. Yeah, and those two kinds are named ghriba. Yeah. So these are similar, but uh, a different little bit flavor, different, different, different flavor. Different okay. flavor. Yeah, exactly. So I'm gonna try this one here first. Yeah. This one you said has uh, anise seeds. Uh, anise seeds. That's cool. Yeah. Mm. It's almost like a biscotti. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's like a biscuit or cookie. Mm. Yeah. This one. Go for the cocoa one. Yeah. Okay. Cocoa and semolina. Oh wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cocoa and semolina. This so one. Coconut. 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 Oh, coconut. Sorry. Coconut. coconut. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Strong yeah. coconut flavor. It's a lot softer than this then, one for sure. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this was with chocolate, kind. yeah? Yeah, chocolate and dates. Okay. Yeah. Oh, man. That's so good. Yeah. That's like the perfect chewy texture. Yeah. Like a chewy chocolate chip cookie. Oh, man. There are over 9,000 streets and alleyways here in the Fez Medina. There is no way, even if I gave you the address to these shops, that you would find them on your own. So you need to book a tour with Moroccan food tours. So we just saw the mosque where the second king of the Kingdom of Morocco is buried and you can see this really really cool uh, design on this wooden uh, thing behind me here and you can see that it's actually quite um, low to the ground and that is to keep the donkeys and the horses out of this area because it's a sacred area. Right now we are walking through a part of the Medina that is famous for metal work and knife making. Really cool, everyone's like sharpening knives, grinding down metal, super cool. We're in a very, very tight alleyway here and we're stopping at a stall that's selling uh, goat cheese, so fresh, fresh goat cheese. Let's try this out. Oh yeah. Very sour. Kind of uh, saturated, a little bit wet. That's good. Thank you. Next up is sheep's cheese. Mm. Oh yeah, that one's much more creamy, almost like a cottage cheese. What kind is this? This is a mixture between the sheep and goat together. Nice firm texture. Mm. I like the taste of that, this tastes good. Really sour. That was some really good cheese. This has been an incredible day so far. There's so much to see here. There's so many streets, fresh figs. There is uh, people carrying things. There are olives. Um, it is just a feast for all the senses. And every time you take a different turn, it's like a new uh, specialty that they're specializing in, in that alleyway. So uh, we just walked through like a fish market area. Yeah, just crazy, so much fun. Camel head. Kiss it. <laughs> <laughs> This is a Berber strawberry and it's grown in the wild and I've never actually seen this before, but I'm gonna give it a try. Mm. Mm. Very light. Mm. Quite sweet. Seeds inside are very crunchy. Mm. Overall, it's very nice. Does it taste like a strawberry? Similar. So we just looked up the English name. It's called a strawberry tree fruit. So these grow on trees and uh, in the forest, the Berbers will collect them. Serena just said it was pretty good. I'm gonna try it. Oh yeah. 
It's a little bit sour, and it's actually got like a really dense texture. Check out these massive Moroccan melons. Wow. I could never eat all this, but Mohammed told me that he ate all of this in one sitting. <laughs> We just stopped at the stall selling something very unique. I've never seen this preparation before anywhere else in the world. So she's making a type of flatbread called tirit, and she thins the dough out very thin. But then the device that she's using to cook the bread is what's so unique. It's kind of shaped like a upside down walk, almost like a balloon actually, the shape of it. And there's a fire going underneath it and she'll drape the very thin dough on top of this and let it fry just like that. And it's used for a dish called rafisa and it's very unique. You, it's not really worth just trying by itself because it's just a thin bread, but it's used in other dishes. So she actually gave us a small sample to try. Yeah, not much to it. Maybe a little bit of salt, olive oil. We are now in part of the Medina that is famous for dyeing clothes. So they use the uh, pigments to dye all kinds of different colors and the ground is just covered with water that is saturated with all those pigments. So you gotta be really careful not to get it all over yourself. Really cool, lots of people working, um, cooking the water that they'll use to dye the clothing with and then lots of clothing hanging to dry too. So you can hear all this loud banging behind me. We are in the copper area of the Medina. They're making all kinds of uh, traditional things out of copper, and we're gonna stop and have tea somewhere near here. It smells like gold. Comb. This guy behind me here is making traditional things out of bone. So he's got uh, different types of things, combs, and he's using a saw to cut the bone. It's a uh, dying tradition here in Morocco, but very cool. Grow some of it. Yeah, and keep it close to your nose. <laughs> So we are approaching the tannery now. This is where they're making the fresh leather. And as we walked in, they handed us a handful of mint because the smell of the animal hides is quite strong here. So you gotta keep it close to your nose. Mm. So this tannery has a bunch of different colors, all made from natural sources. So the red comes from the poppy flower, the blue from indigo, and brown actually comes from pigeon poop. So it doesn't actually help with the smell up here, but we got the mint. It's so cool. This is a super cool site, one of the most famous in Fez, and quality-wise, this is the best leather production in Morocco, and quantity, it's the second largest, and the oldest tannery here in uh, Morocco, so make sure you come check this place out and grab some mint to cover up from the smell. Yeah, they will explain about all the mints. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's so good. Oh, wow, that's wow. verbena, I think? No. Geranium. 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 Oh. Wow. This is verbena. Oh, yeah, wow. Smell good? Yeah, it smells really good. This is the absent. Absent. Oh, wow. Yeah, nice. Whew. We just popped into the tea shop. This is a tiny little place, but a really cool atmosphere. And we're just having a little herb smelling session. Some really good smelling stuff in here. Yeah. What's this one? This is two Ooh. kinds of mint. This is wild mint wild. and this is uh, peppermint. Oh man. Oh yeah. Wow. Mm. It just like wakes up all your senses. Oh, oh.
So we just watched him prepare the coolest cup of tea I think I've ever seen. The only place that I can think that this reminds me of is when we were in Bethlehem. We visited a guy named Sammy and he made a similar type of tea with all kinds of different herbs. But this one is just packed to the brim. Look at this, it's completely stuffed full with herbs. So there's sage, there's verbenum, there's all kinds of mint, there's uh, all kinds of things that I'm not remembering, but it just smells so good and sugar as well. He served it also in this like metal thing so you don't burn your hand. Let me try it out. Wow, whoa. Sweet, slightly bitter, very earthy and herbal. There's just so much flavor, it's very strong. <laughs> There's barely like any water in it, it's just completely herbs. Wow. That was an amazing tea, so flavorful. All those herbs in there, the uh, sage and the absinthe, verbena, geranium, it really just works so well together and it's really refreshing, like almost like a mouth freshener. We have done a ridiculous amount of snacking today, but it's time for lunch now. <laughs> We are in a tiny little alleyway and we are stopped for lunch and we're trying a little bit of chicken with noodles as well as camel back fat. So this will be a first for us. We are sitting down for lunch and this is such an atmospheric restaurant. We are in a tiny little dining room. The alleyway is right here and everything is filled with smoke because of the grilled skewer stalls around us. But we've ordered up two different dishes. This one is something I'm looking forward to trying. This is a mixture of steamed beef, steamed camel meat, and then this is the steamed camel fat. Over here we've got the chicken with noodles, chicken lag with noodles. I've n never seen either of these dishes before. I've definitely never had camel. I'm gonna start with a little bit of the steamed chicken. Wow, that pulled apart really easy. And some of these noodles. And you can see the noodles are cut very uh, short, almost like grains of rice. Mm. Oh man, that is delicious. Wow, those noodles completely fall apart. And then the chicken's so tender too. Tons of cumin salt and maybe some oregano some herbs on top that is really really good okay let's try this camel next I gotta try this this looks just too interesting so this is the camel back fat which I've heard is almost like a cream oh man yeah this is gonna definitely be my first time ever having camel before check that out mm. Wow, it's just melt in your mouth, creamy. Oily, kind of tastes like beef fat. There's no gaminess, really. And it's so soft because it's been steamed. Ah, really good, actually, really, really good. Let's try some of the meat. Which one's the camel meat? Like the reddish one. This one? Yeah, this, okay. this one will be the camel meat. Okay, all right, let's get some of this camel meat here. Very, very soft, too. Yeah. German. Good. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, this is the camel fat. Uh, yeah. This is the camel meat. Oh, oh. This is the camel tongue. Camel tongue. Tongue. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, this is camel tongue, too. This is camel tongue, too? German. This one's beef or? Uh, beef. This is beef. Oh, okay. Let's try some of the camel. Yeah, everything is cooked with steamed with spices. Steamed with spices, yes. Yeah. So this is actually a piece of the camel tongue. So we don't have any of the of the like actual meat, but just the tongue and the fat. So camel tongue. I'm gonna go for a dip in the uh, tomato sauce here. I'm really interested to try this. I don't know what it's gonna taste like. Mm. Tastes like roast beef. It really doesn't even taste like a tongue at all. It's super tender. All the spices going on in there. 30 spices. 
and then that tart tomato sauce that really tastes like roast beef there's no camel flavor to it at least i don't know what camel tastes like it just tastes like beef to me that's really good really really good actually and now i'm gonna try camel meat for the first time it looks pretty interesting Yep. Exactly like roast beef. You're right about that. Mm. It's really good. If you come to Morocco, you have to try some camel. The back fat tastes like tofu, and then the tongue and everything else tastes like beef. So, pretty normal stuff. I think Mohammed is trying to kill me. I'm yeah. getting so full. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. It's uh, like, yeah, of course a 15 pound more is a <laughs> After guarantee. this trip, yeah. yeah. <laughs> After all of our eating today, we just sit down to have two massive plates of meat that is certainly heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> so I think we're taking yeah. a break for a little bit and then that, tonight we're gonna have some couscous. Yeah, right? and that's what you sign up for if you... Book your tour. Yeah, book a tour. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you're gonna come out 15 pounds heavier. <laughs> Over there. <laughs> Sadly enough, this is our last day here in Morocco. It's been an incredible trip and if you guys are familiar with Moroccan food and you've been following the series, you're probably freaking out that we haven't eaten couscous yet. But tonight we have a very special couscous event. We're gonna take a little bit of a break, a little digestion break. Oh my gosh, we need a big digestion break. <laughs> yeah, and then we'll catch back up with you this evening. So it's evening time now, about 7.30 p.m. We are in the basement of our Riyadh, which is the hotel that we're staying at here in Fez. And we are just finishing up cooking the couscous. So I've actually never had couscous. It's famous all around the world, but I've never tried it. So what better time than try it here in Morocco where it is famous. So couscous is crushed semolina, almost like a pasta, very small balls, and we're going to put some uh, like gravy and some stew on top. So I'm really interested to try this. It smells so good down here. Because it's very hot. شي معلقه سمح من كبيره شي معلقه سمح من كبيره Couscous, the food, so nice, they named it twice. This is gonna be my first time trying it and I am super excited, check this out. So you can see this fluffy semolina underneath, that is the couscous, but on top we have all kinds of different vegetables. We've got caramelized raisins and chickpeas and just zucchini, carrots, potatoes, cabbage. I gotta get some of those, uh, those raisins, caramelized raisins. Look at that, that is beautiful. Mm. Oh yeah, the couscous is so fluffy. It's really airy and light. It feels like you could eat so much more couscous than rice, for example. Those um, raisins are sweet and a little bit sour, and then those chickpeas are very, very tender. Oh man, this is such a beautiful plate of food. I'm in love, oh man. Underneath this big piece of cabbage here, you can see we've got these beautiful chunks of lamb meat. I'll just push that to the side. And let me go in and try some of this lamb with the couscous. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> Let's try that. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm. The couscous texture has gotta be my favorite part. It's so, it's like a cloud, it's so fluffy. It doesn't even feel like you're really eating anything. It just facilitates all the other ingredients into your mouth. All right guys, that's it for today. You can see we're, <laughs> we're pouring a little bit of Moroccan mint tea, uh, leaving it up to Mohammed. 
because I definitely can't pour it as expertly as him. <laughs> what an incredible day here in Fez, and that is it for our Moroccan series. It has been so much fun hanging out with you, man. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh yeah, appreciate it, yeah. guys. It was so 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 fun. My my pleasure. My yes. pleasure. Yes. Like and subscribe. Those yeah. guys are incredible. <laughs> please please. And next time you come to Morocco, if you're looking for a destination with beautiful nature, delicious food, culture, and just a real raw and authentic experience. Morocco is just a huge recommendation of mine. Yes. Amazing travel destination, and you gotta book a tour with uh, Mohammed and uh, Moroccan food tours. Yeah. Yeah. But you also offer cooking classes and other types of tours, yeah, photography yeah, of tours, course, and photography tours, yeah. and other tours. Just yeah, check out the links. Yeah, all yeah. over the country, so it's it's really awesome and you know super knowledgeable. You were very you. kind to Thank us you. and showed yeah, us yeah. everything Morocco has to offer. We're so happy. Well, you didn't see everything. <laughs> yes, and that yeah. brings me to my <laughs> true. next point, which is we have to come back here. So if you guys want to see us come back here, let us know down in the comment box. But I think it's already decided we're coming yeah. back. <laughs> so uh, we'll see you again on Chopstick Travel very soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.